This is the first video in a series about nonlinear motion. To this point, we have only dealt with motion in one dimension, or motion that happens along a straight line. And obviously, there are lots of examples in this world of motion that's not constrained to a straight line. So we're going to extend what we have done in linear motion to handle some of those other cases. Here's a nice example of nonlinear motion. This is a clip I found from the Women's College World Series of Softball, and this is a home run by Oklahoma's Shay Knighton. The motion of the ball during its home run trajectory is not a straight line, but it's basically contained in a vertical plane, so we need two dimensions to describe it. So this is an example of two-dimensional motion, and the motion looks something like this. Here's a totally different kind of nonlinear motion. This is a coin rolling in a curved funnel that I found at my local grocery store. Notice that the coin is rolling along, spiraling in toward the center of the funnel, and it's also dropping down vertically as it spirals in, so it would actually take three dimensions to describe this motion. Let's just forget about the vertical dropping motion and take a look at a simulation that shows a particle moving along a spiral path. So how would we talk about this kind of motion in physics? Well, one of the first things we need to do is to review the terms we defined in one-dimensional motion, like distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and so on, and think about how those definitions might be extended to cover motion in more than one dimension. It turns out that it's fairly straightforward to do this, and you can probably almost predict what those definitions are going to look like. Remember that in one-dimensional motion, position was the coordinate of an object. In two-dimensional motion, the position is given by the coordinates of the object. If the motion is constrained to a plane, two coordinates will do, and if not, you'll need three coordinates. So let's take a look at this example and determine the position of this point. Before you can read off coordinates, you need axes. So here are some axes with labels. And once the axes are defined, you can just read off the coordinates. In this case, the coordinates are 3.8 comma negative 1.0. You might wonder why I chose to place the axes there, and the answer is there was really no good reason. The axes can go wherever you want, and if you want the origin to be smack dab in the middle of the action, that's fine, but the coordinates of the point will change. And so for these axes, the coordinates are 0 0.8 comma 2.0. Let's think about distance, which in one dimension is defined as the ground covered between two points. That definition still applies. Let me pick a second point and label the coordinates. The distance traveled by the particle between these two points is just the length of this curved path. Meanwhile, displacement in one dimension was defined as a change in position, and the same is true in more than one dimension. If we use those same two points as an example, the displacement would be the straight line distance between the two points, along with the direction of motion between the two points. Here you see that I've used an arrow to indicate the displacement. The length of that arrow, which is referred to as the magnitude of the displacement, is about 1.8 units. And this angle here, which we refer to as the direction, is around 19 degrees below the negative x-axis. In order to fully define the displacement, it is critical to define both the magnitude and the direction. And a quantity like this with both magnitude and direction is called a vector. Displacement is the first example we have seen of a vector, but it isn't the last. We'll see many more vector quantities going forward. Because vectors are so important, I'm going to pause before defining the rest of the terms. I'd like you to take a look at the next video, which gives a nice introduction to vectors, or it could be a review if you've already seen vectors in some other context like a pre-calculus course. This video isn't done by me, but it contains everything I want you to know, and it's really an excellent video. Even if you think you don't need to watch the whole thing because you already know about vectors, please at least look at the last minute or so where physics notation for vectors is defined. After the introduction to vectors, I'll go on to talk about how to extend the rest of the terms that were defined in linear motion to apply to nonlinear motion.